Imagine the excitement as the 2024 Formula One season kicks off, but there's a twist. The Alpine team is missing from the initial races. Why? They've aced the frontal crash test, but flunked the lateral one. With the A524's presentation set for February 7th, the clock is ticking. So, let's dive into this video today to uncover why Alpine's nightmare could shake up the F1 grid this season. Alpine hasn't yet gotten the green light for its 2024 car's chassis, as per reports from Motorsport Italy. But there's a silver lining. The technical director, Matt Harmon, has been hard at work making adjustments. For instance, they've tweaked the chassis and the Renault power unit packaging. Plus, they've revised the positions of various side accessories. Despite the setback, Alpine seems to pull out all the stops to get their car ready for the upcoming season. Concept change. On Wednesday, Alpine revealed its new car for 2024. It's completely different from the one they used before. Matt Harmon, who is in charge of the technical stuff, said they only kept the steering wheel from the old car. This change happened because they finished sixth in 2023 and wanted to do better. This big change, called an aggressive revamp, doesn't just involve making the car look different. They also changed things like how the air flows around the car, how the back suspension works, and how the car stays cool. The goal is to make a car that can improve a lot in the future and is easier for drivers like Ocon and Gasly to use. But switching to a whole new design might mean Alpine starts the new season in Bahrain not as prepared as they'd like. Both Ocon and Gasly know about this possibility. They were told it might take some time for the team to get used to the new car and perform well. It's a possible scenario, replied Ocon, when asked if Alpine is ready for a tough start by Autosport. We have a new idea, the car is completely new, and when you do that, you usually take a step back. I'm not saying that's what will happen because we haven't tested the car yet, but the plan is to make it better as the year goes on and we get more experience on the track. It's important to get good feedback right from the start so we know where to improve and if the choices we made for the car are right. It's not so important where we start, but where we are halfway through the season. Gasly also warned that he and Ocon might need to be a little bit patient while the team in Enstone works to get more performance out of the car. They felt this wasn't possible anymore with the old concept from 2023. As Matt said, the steering wheel is the only thing that's still the same from last year. So, when you start from nothing, there's always more risk, Gasly explained. But sometimes, you have to take risks if you want to get big rewards. So that's the strategy we've decided to go with. We haven't tested the car yet. We must wait for Bahrain to get a feel for it. But we know there's potential to improve. We just might have to wait a bit. The big changes at Alpine mean they're starting the season in a similar situation to McLaren's in Baku last year. McLaren changed their concept back then, but didn't immediately improve performance. However, it did allow McLaren to make big improvements with later upgrades. Gasly says McLaren's experience and Aston Martin's rapid improvements the year before give him hope that Alpine can make a similar comeback. Since the summer, Alpine has made significant changes to its team. I think it shows in F1 that it's possible to make a big comeback during a season, he said. Of course, it depends on how well you start the year, but I'm hopeful. I see the mentality in the team, the spirit, the recruitment. I see where we're heading as a race team. We're making the right steps. Obviously, it's not that straightforward in F1 when you come with a completely new concept. It might not provide all the rewards you expect from the beginning. You just have to be open-minded about it. But looking at others, we get inspired by what they're doing. A couple of stories from last season bring hope and motivation to the entire team. Alpine failed the lateral crash test, so Alpine passed the frontal crash test, which Red Bull Racing also had to do again. However, they faced trouble with the lateral test, where they needed to ensure anti-intrusion with a static test, applying a load of 300 kN to the sides. Alpine failed this test as they were looking for maximum frame density. With the car presentation scheduled for 7th of February, Alpine needs to get approval from the FIA soon. It's unclear when Alpine will try again to test their sides. What does the F1 chief say? Famine, who is both the team principal and head of Alpine's motorsport projects, confirmed to motorsport.com that the team had to retake some tests, which they eventually passed. However, he expressed that he welcomed this process rather than being unhappy about it. 
We had to redo some tests, some homologations tests, he explained, but I think it's just a normal part of the process. If you pass all the tests the first time, it means that you haven't been ambitious enough. So let's wait and see what the final result will be, but having to redo some tests is not a criticism at all. While the leading Red Bull team has chosen to make small changes to their car design this year, Alpine has taken a riskier route by introducing a completely new car. This decision means they may need to improve the car's performance quickly to avoid falling behind. Additionally, with new car regulations set for 2026, there won't be an opportunity to change course next year if the new design doesn't work out. While some may see Alpine's decision as a gamble, Famine disagrees. It's not a gamble, he said. We've put in much effort to develop a new car. We've changed everything that we could within the regulations. This decision comes from two main reasons. Firstly, we've learned from our past experiences. We've gained knowledge about aerodynamics tires and how they perform and degrade over time. Secondly, like many other teams, we're preparing for the new 2026 regulations, which are expected to be introduced midway through the 2024 season. This means we'll need to allocate a lot of resources to start working on the 26 project early on. As a result, the 2025 car might only see mild changes from the 24 one. It was crucial for us to take a big step forward in 2024. However, it's still uncertain how quickly we'll progress. There are many new elements and we're unsure of our position on the grid. What matters most is our ability to develop the car throughout the season. What else does Ocon and Gasly say for the upcoming season? Ocon and Gasly are staying on as the all-French driver duo for another season. I'm really excited for the upcoming season and can't wait to get back in the car and start racing again, said Ocon, who finished 12th in the 2023 standings, just four points behind Gasly. This time of year is always thrilling because it's when we get to see what the team has been working on. I've seen drawings and been on the simulator but I haven't seen or tried the real thing yet. That'll have to wait until shakedown, but it's a special moment for the team as it's the result of thousands of hours of hard work. Gasly, who finished 11th last year, feels much more prepared for his second season at Enstone following his switch from Alpha Tauri. I can definitely say that I'm in a much better place now than I was this time last year, he said. I know all the people I'm working with, I understand all the processes, and I know how to get the best out of everyone around me and myself. It's great to have continuity and to build on what we achieved last year. I'm confident that I can start the season strong and help the team achieve its full potential. So, this is all about the F1 nightmare. What do you think of the failed tests leading Alpine to miss the initial races of 2024? Comment below and subscribe for more.